Hello everyone, I hope you all are fine and are doing well. We have completed the fifth chapter that is decimals. Now let's revise the chapter with the help of a mind map. So this is the mind map of the chapter decimals. We started the chapter by learning about the meaning of the term decimals or decimal fractions. We saw that the fractions which have the denominators 10, 100, 1000 or we can say that denominators as a multiple of 10 are known as decimal fractions. We learned that a decimal number is made up of three parts. The first is the whole number part, then the decimal point and the third is the decimal part. So here we have a decimal number 2.42. So 2 is the whole number. We have the decimal point in the center which is dividing the whole number part and the decimal part and towards the right we have the decimal part that is 4 and 2. Next we learned about the decimal place value chart. We learned that a decimal number has three parts, a whole number part, a decimal point and the decimal part. Similarly, the decimal place value chart also has three parts that is the whole number part, the decimal point and the decimal part. We also saw that the whole number part is towards the left of the decimal point and the decimal part is towards the right. We all are aware of the decimal place value of the whole number part that starts with ones, tens, hundreds, thousands and goes on like 10,000, lakhs, 10 lakhs and so on. In the center we have the decimal point which is separating the whole number part and the decimal part. Now let's talk about the place value of the decimal part. The place value of the decimal part starts with tenth, hundredth, thousandth and so on. Now the place value of the whole number we are aware that it starts from 1, 10, 100, 1000. Now what about the decimal place value? So it goes like 10th is represented as 1 by 10. That means it is 1 part out of 10 parts. 100 is represented as 1 by 100. That means 1 out of 100 parts. 1000th is represented as 1 upon 1000. That is 1 part out of 1000 parts. Here we have a number represented in the decimal place value chart. That is 3456.278. We read the number in the decimal part individually. We read, it, we read it as 278. We do not read it as 278. Now how you are reading the decimal number, similarly you are going to write the decimal number. Now let's talk about the expanded form of a decimal number. There are three ways to write the expanded form. The first way is the number is 3456.278. So you are going to expand it as 3000 plus 400 plus 5 tens plus 6 ones plus we do not include the decimal point in the expanded form 2 tenth plus 700 plus 8 thousandths. The second form is 3000 plus 400 plus 50 plus 6 plus 2 by 10. You are writing the fraction form of the decimal part. 2 by 10 plus 7 by 100 plus 8 by 1000. Coming to the third form that is the decimal form. You first write the whole number as it is 3000 plus 400 plus 50 plus 6. Now we convert the fraction into the decimal number that is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.008. Eight. Now how did we convert 2 by 10, 7 by 100, 8 by 1000 into 0 0.2, 0 0.007 and 0 0.008? We will learn in the next example where we are converting a decimal fraction into a decimal number. The next topic that we learned was conversion of a decimal fraction into decimals and we also learned the vice versa of it that is conversion of decimals into decimal fractions. Further we learned conversion of normal fractions into decimals and decimals into normal fractions. We will look at the examples at the end of the video. Further we learned about like decimals and unlike decimals. Now what are like decimals and what are unlike decimals? The decimals which have the same number of decimal places are known as like decimals and the opposite of it is unlike decimals. The decimal numbers which have different number of decimal places are known as unlike decimals. For example, here we have the numbers 
2.37 and 51.28. So these two numbers are like decimals. Why? Because the number of decimal places is same in both these numbers. Next example is 1.129 and 0.21. These two decimal numbers are unlike decimals because the number of decimal places is different. In the first number we have three decimal places and in the second number we have two decimal places. We also learn that we can always convert unlike decimals into like decimals. How? We can just add zero to make the number of decimal places equal. So here we saw an example of unlike decimals. We have 1.129 and 0.21. So the highest number of decimal places is 3. So we can make 0.21 into a like decimal by adding a 0 next to 1. So 0 0.210. Now these two numbers are like decimals. Further we learned about comparison of decimals. Now while we are comparing decimals there are two ways. First while we are comparing decimals you have to compare the whole number part. Okay now if the whole number part is different you will directly get your answer. Second step if your whole number part is same in the given numbers you will further go for comparison of the decimal part. So here we have an example. First example is the decimal number is 21.36 and 20.15. So here first we will compare the whole number part. So in the first number the whole number is 21 and in the second number the whole number is 20. So we can directly say that 21.36 is greater than 20.15. Second example is 12.125 and 12.421. So first we should look at the whole number part. So here we can see the whole number part is same. That is 12. So we cannot compare. We will move to the decimal part. We will start a comparison from the 10th place value. So here we have 1 and here we have 4. So we know that the value of 4 is greater than 1. So we can say that 12.421 is greater than 12.125. Further we learned about the operations with the decimal numbers. We started with addition and subtraction of decimal numbers. We learned that we can only add or subtract like decimals. So if in a question you are getting unlike decimals, first you will convert them into like decimals and then you will do your required operation. Last we learned about multiplication and division of decimal numbers. There is no hard and fast rule that you have to multiply and divide only like decimals. You can carry forward your operations with unlike decimals as well. Now let's look at the examples. Let's look at few examples of conversion of a decimal fraction into a decimal number and conversion of a decimal into a decimal fraction. So here we have a decimal fraction that is 32 upon 100. Why it is a decimal fraction? Because the denominator is as a multiple of 10. So whenever you have to convert a decimal fraction into a decimal number, what you do? You just consider the numerator first. So we will write 32 as it is. Now what about the denominator? You will see how many zeros are there in the denominator. We have two zeros so we will count two numbers from the right. So the first number is 2, second number is 3. So we will place a point just before 3. Now this appears incomplete 0.32. So we will write 0.32. So the decimal number of the decimal fraction 32 upon 100 is 0.32. Now let's look at the another example of conversion of a decimal number into a decimal fraction. So here we have a decimal number 1.12. So first we will write the number ignoring the decimal point. So 1.12 will be written as 112. Now we also need a denominator because we are talking about a fraction. Now what will come in the denominator? Now since it is a decimal fraction we know that it will be a multiple of 10. So it has to start with 1. Now how many zeros should be added in the denominator? It depends on how many digits or how many decimal places are there in the given number. So here there are two decimal places 1 and 2. So we will put 
two zeros in the denominator. So the decimal fraction for 1.12 is 112 upon 100. Now let's look at the next topic that is conversion of a normal fraction into a decimal and also the vice versa of it that is conversion of a decimal into normal fraction. So the first example is conversion of a normal fraction 4 by 5 into a decimal. Now what is the difference between a normal fraction and a decimal fraction? A decimal fraction has the denominator as a multiple of 10 but in the normal fraction the denominator is not the multiple of 10. Now whenever you have to convert a normal fraction into a decimal our first step is to convert it into a decimal fraction. Now how will we do it? We will always convert the denominator as 10, 100, 1000 and so on. Now we know that to convert a fraction into an equivalent fraction we multiply the numerator and the denominator with the same number. Now if I have to convert 4 by 5 into an equivalent fraction with the denominator 10 we should multiply 4 by 5 with 2 in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So 5 into 2 is 10 we already have the denominator 4 into 2 is 8. So here we got our decimal fraction. Why? Because the denominator is 10. Now we will convert this decimal fraction into a decimal number. So we will write the numerator as it is. Now there is one zero in the denominator. We will skip one digit and we will place the decimal point. So the answer is 0 0.8. So now the normal fraction has been converted into a decimal number that is 0 0.8. Now let's talk about the vice versa of it that is conversion of a decimal into a normal fraction. Taking the same example of the number 1.12. Now again when you have to convert a decimal into a normal fraction you have to first convert it into a decimal fraction and then you will be converting it into a normal fraction. We just saw how to convert 1.12 into a decimal fraction. So we will write the number by ignoring the decimal point. Now 112 upon 100 because they are two decimal places. Now to convert it into a normal fraction we will simplify this fraction. Now how do we simplify? Either you can cancel the terms or you can divide your numerator and the denominator by their HCF. So the HCF of 112 and 100 is 4. So we will divide 112 with 4. So you can do it in the rough column. We know that 4, 4 2's are 8 and 4 3's are 12. So we cannot take 3. We will take 2. 4 2's are 8. Cancel. 11 minus 8 is 3. Bring down 2. So 4 into 8 is 32. So that means 112 divided by 4 is 28 and 100 divided by 4 is 25. So this is the simplest form you can further convert it into a mixed fraction because this is an improper fraction. Now the other way to convert a decimal into a normal fraction is that this is your decimal number. We will consider the whole number part separately and we will consider the decimal part separately. So we will write the whole number part as it is. Now we will convert the decimal part into the fraction form. So 0 0.12 because 1 is taken as the whole number. So it becomes 12 upon 100. So they, these are the two ways to convert a decimal into a normal fraction. Now let's look at the examples for addition and subtraction of decimals. So here we have the question that says add 326.12 plus 0.256. Now we know that we can only add like decimals. Now if you look carefully these two are unlike decimals. So first we need to convert them into like decimals. Now the maximum decimal place is 3. So we will add a 0 to the first number so it becomes 326.120 plus 0.256. Now we will arrange them in the form of a col column. We will first arrange the first add in then the second add in. Now let's add these two decimal numbers. Now 0 plus 6 is 6, 2 plus 5 is 7, 
1 plus 2 is 3 and now we will place the decimal point as it is under the decimal point. 6 plus 0 is 6, then 2 as it is and then 3. So our sum is 326.376. Now let's talk about subtraction of decimal numbers. We have the question 139.075 minus 21.02. Now again if you observe carefully you will notice that these two are unlike decimals. So first we will convert these unlike decimals into like decimals. So again here the maximum decimal place is 3. So we should have the maximum decimal place in the second number also as 3. So we will add 21.020. We will add an extra 0. Now let's subtract. We will arrange the minuend and a subtrahend. So it is 139.075 minus 21.020. Now let's subtract. 5 minus 0 is 5. 7 minus 2 is again 5. 0 minus 0 is 0. Now here also we will place the decimal, decimal point as it is under the existing decimal point. 9 minus 1 is 8. 3 minus 2 is 1 and this one will be written as it is. So the difference is 118.055. So always remember you can only add and subtract the like decimals. Next we have multiplication and division of decimal numbers. Now when we have to do the operation of multiplication and division, we can always do the operation with like decimals as well as unlike decimals. So here we have an example for multiplication of decimal numbers. The question is multiply 1.25 and 2.5. So now when you have to do multiplication of decimal numbers, we will carry out normal multiplication by ignoring the decimal point. So here we have placed the numbers in the column form 125 into 25. Let's multiply 5 into 5 is 25. So 2 will go as a carryover and then 5. 5 into 2 is 10 plus 2 12. 1 will again go as a carryover and 2. 5 into 1 is 5 plus 1. 6. Now over here either you can put a cross or you can write 0. Next we have 2 into 5 as 10. So we will take 1 as carry over and 0. 2 into 2 is 4 plus 1 5 and then 2 into 1 is 2. We will add these two rows. So 5, 2 plus 0 is 2. 6 plus 5 is 11. So 1 will go as a carry over and 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. We got the number 3125. Now how will we place the decimal point? Now let's get back to the question. In the question we have how many decimal places? So here in the second number we have one decimal place and in the first number we have two decimal places. That means total we have three decimal places so in your product that means in your answer you will place the decimal point after the three places so that is one two and three we will have a decimal point between three and one so the answer for 1.25 into 2.5 is 3.125 now let's talk about division of decimal numbers here we have a question 12.4 divided by 4 you will arrange it in the normal division format, 4 is the divisor, 12.4 is your dividend. We will start with the normal division. 4 into 3 is 12. So we will write 3 over here and 12 over here. Minus, we get 0. Now, here we have the decimal point. So right above it, you will place the decimal point in your quotient. And you will bring down this 4 for your further calculation. Now, 4 into 1 is 4. You get your remainder 0. So your answer is the quotient that is 3.1. So always while dividing decimal numbers, be careful to place the decimal point in the quotient right above the decimal point in the dividend. So students, I hope you have understood the chapter decimals. Practice all the questions which are given in the textbook. I will see you in the next interactive session. Thank you and have a nice day.